Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with kidney and bladder ailments, starting with the letter C. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on with ailments of the brain and nervous system, then I'll address issues with the skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, bladder, then ailments specific to women and then specific to men, then issues of the hormones and the, in the metabolism, then homeopathic remedies for infections, infestations in the immune system, then issues surrounding fertility, pregnancy, childbirth, postnatal problems, and then homeopathic remedies for special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescence, and finally, special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it's recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus, or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mere people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of a stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings. An account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So, let us continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with kidney and bladder ailments, starting with the letter C. In the average adult, the kidneys filter the total volume of the blood nearly 300 times a day, producing about one liter or two pints of urine, passed on four to six occasions. As urine is produced, it filters in col into collecting ducts in the neck of the kidneys and trickles down the uterus into the bladder. As soon as the bladder is half full, its total capacity is about one pint, stretch receptors in its wall signal the urge to urinate. After the age of about four, the sphincter between the bladder and urethra is under voluntary control. The male urethra, which acts as a passageway for semen as well as urine, is nearly four times as long as the female. This and the fact its opening at the tip of the penis is well removed from the anus explains why men are less susceptible to urinary infections than women. Unfortunately, the short female urethra provides bacteria with a relatively swift invasive route to the bladder. 
Urine, the sterile product of the non-stop filtering activities of the kidneys, is 96% water and 4% organic and inorganic solids. And its color can be a valuable guide, not only to the function of the kidneys, but also to the state of the liver and gallbladder. The kidneys regulate the amount of water and also the balance of acid and alkaline constituents in the blood. And on those two things, all the chemical functions of the body ultimately depend. Inside each kidney, the branches of the renal artery subdivide into a million or so tiny tufts of blood vessels called glomeruli, small molecules, water, salt, various minerals, glucose, and waste such as urea, which is a byproduct of protein breakdown, squeeze through their walls under pressure and enter a million adjacent, adjacent tubules called nephrons, which selectively reabsorb them. In a healthy kidney, 99% of the water and all the glucose are reabsorbed. This reabsorption process is controlled by hormones made in the pituitary gland at the base of the brain and in the adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidneys. The kidneys themselves produce a number of hormones that help to control blood pressure, stimulate production of red blood cells in the bone marrow, and activate vitamin D. Cystitis. Cystitis mainly affects women, principally because the female urethra is short and easily invaded by bacteria and other microbes present in bowel, vagina, and vulval area. In men, cystitis is usually secondary to prostate problems, bladder tumors, bladder stones, or congenital abnormalities of the bladder or urethra. The term cystitis is often used rather loosely to describe three different conditions that have similar symptoms. A frequent urge to urinate, scanty urine that smells strongly, and stings or scalds as it is passed and may have blood in it. Sometimes there may be a dull ache in the lower abdomen as well. Cystitis proper is inflammation of the bladder due to infection, usually by E. coli bacteria transferred from the bowel. It is particularly common in the early stages of pregnancy and attacks tend to recur. Urethral syndrome is chronic irritation of the bladder and urethra due to causes other than bacterial infection. Antibiotics, certain contraceptives, hormone imbalances caused by stress or fear, diet, food allergy, hygiene, clotting urination patterns, intercourse, and bruising of the urethra during intercourse have all been cited as possible causes. Urethritis is inflammation of the urethra only, occasionally due to infection, but more often to bruising during intercourse. It lasts for two to three days at most and is common in women who have just started to have intercourse. Though it poses little risk to general health, cystitis should be treated. If an attack lasts for more than 48 hours, see your doctor. The standard weapon of orthodox medicine is antibiotics and urine analysis if the condition recurs. Some of the self-help methods given below may also be recommended. The homeopathic approach to recurrent attacks is constitutional, although the remedies given below will release symptoms and isolated flare-ups. Specific remedies to be taken every half hour for up to 10 doses. Burning, cutting pains in lower abdomen, too severe to ignore. Non-stop urge to urinate. Ache in the small of the back tends to get worse in the afternoon. Merest trickle of urine with blood in it. Inability to enter bladder properly. Use Cantharis 30C. Frequent and painful urinate, frequent and painful urging with little result. Nux 6C. Sharp, stinging pains in lower abdomen, frequent urge to urinate, urine scanty, hot, and bloody. Symptoms seem worse for heat and better for cold. Use Apis 30C. Burning sensation along urethra, bladder sensitive to jarring, 
Urine bright red with little clots of blood in it. Urging persists even after urine has been passed. Use Belladonna 30C. High fever, excruciating pain in bladder area, bladder swollen and hard feeling, extremely restless, great sense of hurry. Use Tarantula 6C. Urine slimy with fine mucus in it, burning, radiating pains that get worse during and after passing urine and during rest. Use Berberis 6C. Frequent urge to pass urine made worse by coughing and sneezing. Acute sensitivity to cold. Obeying urge produces nothing but is followed 15 minutes later by involuntary passage of urine. Itching around urethral opening, perhaps with vaginal discharge. Use Causticum 6C. Attack comes on after getting damp and cold after exertion, especially in autumn. Urine bloody and frequent. Use Dulcamara 6C. Pains come on as urination ceases. Urine thick and milky looking. Urgent and pressure to pass urine. Feeling thirsty. Use sarsapil Sarsaparilla Sarsaparilla 6C. Frequent and burning sensation as urine is passed. With pain and small of back. Blood in urine, drowsiness, tingling in ears, tongue red and shiny. Rest makes symptoms worse, but walking in open air alleviates them. Use Terabinth 6C. Attack comes on after sexual intercourse or after catheterization for an operation. Urethra feels as if a drop of urine is continuously trickling, trickling along it. Burning sensation almost constant, even when not passing urine. Use Staphysagria 6C. Stream of urine slow and intermitted. Use Clematis 6C. Burning pains in lower abdomen, feeling restless, chilly, and anxious. Use Arsenicum 6C. Pain worse at start of urination. No urine passed despite intense and urgent straining. Muscles at base of bladder in spasm. Cold makes symptoms worse. Use Comfora 6C. If an attack has been brought on by fear or stress, the, back, the Bach flower remedies Mimulus and Aspen may be helpful. Self-help. There's a lot you can do for yourself in an acute attack of cystitis. To reduce acidity of urine, responsible for the stinging and scalding, and to flush infected urine out of the bladder as quickly as possible, drink a half a pint of cold water, barley water, or water with sodium bicarbonate in, in it every 20 minutes. Don't overdo the bicarbonate, though. One teaspoon per hour, for up to three hours only, is the maximum you should take. If you had a heart condition, stick to plain water or barley water. Curling up with a hot water bottle or ice pack clasped to the lower abdomen also offers relief. There are also a number of preventative measures you can take, whether you suffer from cystitis, urethral syndrome, or urethritis. Urinary habits. Never suppress the urge to urinate. Try to develop the habit of emptying the bladder every four hours and do it twice each time to make sure the bladder is completely empty. Fluid intake and diet. Increase fluid intake to three liters or five pints per day or until urine is a normal color and there is no discomfort upon passing urine. Tea, coffee, and alcohol are not a good idea except perhaps twice a week. The more alkaline your urine, the better. A daily bowl of vegetable broth or a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate taken in water twice a day or a daily glass of alkaline urine turns pink litmus paper blue. So buy some litmus paper from the pharmacist and test it. Foods known to aggravate cystitis and related conditions are asparagus, spinach, beetroot, raw carrots, potatoes and tomatoes, citrus fruit and strawberries, 
red meat, milk and ice cream, condiments, junk food in general, chlorinated water and alcohol are also aggravating. Azuki beans are said to be beneficial. Hygiene. Cleansing routine after each bowel movement. 1. Wipe the bottom from front to back with soft white toilet paper. 2. Wash hands. 3. Soap hands with non-perfumed -perfum soap and wash the anal area, not the vaginal area, with fingers. 4. Rinse hands. 5. S fill a small bottle with warm water, sit back on toilet, and pour water down past urethra opening and vagina, using free hand to wash every nook and cranny. 6. When all traces of soap had been washed away, pat dry with a soft towel, kept only for that purpose. This method uses only hands, unscented soap, and the flow of clean warm water to clean anal and vulva area. Using washcloths or cotton wool is not recommended. They only harbor germs, nor are bidets or squatting in the bathtub and douching with a shower recommended. The way germs may spread or be forced up the urethra, nor are vaginal deodorants, vaginal douches, medicated creams, bath oils, bath salts, bubble baths, talcum powder, or antiseptics like Dettol, all of which can irritate the skin. If possible, tampons should be avoided too. Sexual intercourse, if possible, have a drink of water and empty the bladder before intercourse. Be as relaxed as possible and spin out time spent in foreplay. Use KY jelly as a lubricant and don't be afraid to experiment with different positions to see if they relieve pressure on the bladder or the urethra. After intercourse, empty bladder and wash away semen using the bottle of warm water technique described above. The man should wash his hands and penis before intercourse. Since long fingernails harbor germs, both partners should keep the nails short. Clothing. Give up nylon underwear for cotton and all nylon hose for those with a cotton gusset and change them every day. Wash them in pure soap, never with detergents or bleach, and rinse them thoroughly. Antibiotics. These should be avoided in cystitis unless absolutely necessary as they tend to promote thrush. If a course of antibiotics is necessary, for example, if other measures have failed, or if there is fever indicating that infection may be spreading, eat a small carton of natural yogurt every day for five days as soon as the course finishes, or kefir. This helps to repopulate the body with the healthy bacteria that the, anti that the antibiotics destroyed along with the undesirable ones. I have a great many videos now on a many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.